Danica gave me an antihistamine for my itchy throat, so I said it should not make me sleep because she said it's not drowsy. Pag ako natulog dito habang nakatayo pa. Ikaw magtutuloy ng teaching. Okay, alright. So, wow, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we learned a lot from the first portion, which is the first part, it's all about tithing. Now, the second thing is about majority, I would say 80% will be still talking about tithing, but meron portion about offering, the 90%, okay? So tithing is life. Okay, tithing is life to me. And to part to natin, I remember before I go, I know, uh, siguro, so Genesis siya tayo yung first slide. Ayan, that's right, okay. You know what, when I, this word, steward of God's money came into my realization. Earlier, siguro may draw, magbigyan ako ng patutuon ng buhay ko. I remember when I was, I remember I said to you that my family became, my father is from a poor family, and my mom is from a rich family. Ibang kapatid niya, doktor, pharmaceutica, they're really good, you know, they have degrees and everything. So when I was young, I said, wow, I don't want to be, I don't want to be poor. Dahil nakita ko, money manipulates people. Right? It has a voice. When you have money, kailangan makapagsalita ka. Yung pinakamayaman na ate, siya yung maraming nasasabi. And everyone follows. Kasi may pera. Naintindihan niyo po yung ibig sabihin. Right? So now, I saw that. And I told myself, one day, I don't want to obey money. I don't want to be poor. And I said, I will not, I don't like poverty, and I'll do my best, sabi ko, para makuha ko yung gusto ko, hindi ako hihingi, ayoko na mahirap. Because it felt like my father, my mom is the youngest of ten. So imagine meron nine na nagdidikta sa kanya. And so, because she's the youngest, and my father is a poor, you know, from a poor family, and he worked his way out through college, wala siyang voice. And pinakikilaman nila family. And so I felt like, okay. so make a long story short, my mom went to America before martial law. And sabi ng papa ko, pag nakarating tayo sa America, para sa amin kasi, America is like the, the land of milk and honey. Wow. So sabi ng papa ko, magtrabaho ka lang, mag-aral ka mabuti, you can do it. Because I know you can. And when I was young, so what I did, I studied hard. And because my father is my best friend, and lagi niya akong sinasabihan, kaya mo yan, anak, kaya mo yan. Pag batuhin mo, matalino ka. So kagagano ni Papa ko, naniniwala ako matalino ko. <laughs> Kasi sabi niya, matalino ka, matalino ka. Aral naman ako ng aral, matalino ka. And it's kaya. Until I graduated, first 15 years old college na ako. Because I was accelerated. So I studied hard, I accelerated, 15 years old college na ako. At the age of 18, I got my first job. And my first job in America was, I was a teller sa Bank of America. And I said, parang business economics ako, tapos ito lang, teller lang ako. Parang hindi itong pagay sa akin eh. Sabi kong ganun, I want more, I want more. And so, I took an exam and then I passed my licensure for real estate and then I also took I went in, applied for University of California in San Francisco. You have, you've heard of University of California. So I, I came in and sabi ko, ang first job ko, sabi ng tita ko, just get that job because it's an entry level just to get in. So I did. Kaya lang, I don't like what I'm doing because it's just a first level administrative. I was not challenged. I said, I want more. So what I did, I started to find, you know, meron, director, and there's an assistant, no, man, director, and then the manager, and then you manager niya, I keep asking about what he's doing, okay, so I ask him, so I want to learn, I want more, so I, I, I read the policy, the manual, everything, it's a development office, we're under the chancellor of the university. So I started to understand the work that I'm doing, until one day, I'm helping him na, naintindihan ko na yung ginagawa niya, 
And then I also wanted to know my boss, my directors, whatever she's doing. And she's this person who's so relaxed. She comes to the office, we start at 8, right? She comes at 10. And she talks on the phone by 11, tapos na siya one hour talking. Then she'll read a paper, and then maglalunch na. And then she'll return at 2 o'clock, and she has to leave at 5. Imagine she only works 3 hours. So I ended up finding what she's doing, and she loves me, so she teaches me, I'm doing her work. And I said, oh, grabe. Ako na gumagawa ng work niya. And the manager said, don't do that. But I said, I just want to learn. What I didn't know is her boss was watching me, the highest one. So there was a day, I had this dream. I said, so I said to my father, my mom, I'm 30 years old, I was 22 at that time. Sabi ko, pagdating ko ng 30, you'll be a millionaire. Sabi ko gano'n sa kanila. Sobrang managinit. Alright? And I will be millionaire. Sabi ko gano'n. And I said, I'll do my best. Sabi ko, kasi nga, I know how hard, you know, my parents worked. And and then so, at, at, when my boss found out that I'm doing the work, so he promoted me as manager. And then I said, oh my goodness. Until I'm doing also the, the remember that the lady who, just reads paper every day. So sina nasakan ng boss ko, okay, I have to transfer her to another department. You're gonna get the directorship. And this time I was only 26 years old. So I made my way, in four years, I turned into a director. And sabi ko, grabe ito. And then I came in, I, did, I said, I'm not satisfied yet. Remember, I'm sharing this story because I do not know God yet at the time. And I said, okay, sabi ko, I'll do my best. I studied, I was very pregnant noon. Nag-aaral pa ako na real estate, I'm doing real estate. And I started to make money in real estate aside from making money from, you know, being a director. So I did, I went into real estate, did everything. At the age of 28, I, heard my, I made my first million dollars. And I was doing real estate, I was a director in the university, I was a workaholic, to be honest with you. I worked so hard. I invested, I have my building in San Francisco. How gun do my things the point na money was just overflowing and I moved to Beverly Hills. And I felt like because I was working hard and I was uh, making money. But then do you know that money will never make you happy? <laughs> so when I have that all that money, lalo naman ako nalungkot. I was living in this luxurious house. But then I felt like I'm so far away, I'm so lost. Because all I did is work, work, work. I never enjoyed my money. It's only working and working. I didn't even enjoy my children. I didn't enjoy my family. Because every time that I have a spare time, I have to make money. And that's when I realized that, you know, money became my God. All right? It was in 1994 when I met the Lord. And I was, we were on vacation in the Philippines spa. Would you believe? Because I went into a season of depression. And then I realized, I said, why did everyone have a pera? Yung pala hindi naman pala masaya pag may pera na. And then my dad says, go, all of you, go to the Philippines and have a vacation. And that's when I met my dad in the Philippines spa. And I said, I will never return to the Philippines. See, kinain ko yung sinabi ko. Muli ako ng Filipinas. Nakilala ko si Lord. Maybe because I've been crying out to God. I said, I want joy in my life. I don't want, sabi ko, kung may Diyos, bakit ganito? Kala ko, pag marami ka ng pera, you know how much money? If you do not work for two years and a half in America, two months pa lang, ubus ka na yan. But I did not work. Because I had so much cash. So what I did, we went home, and then do ko na kilala siya, and that was the start of my journey. So when I went home in 1994, February, April palang sabi ng papa ko, "Mui ka na, imbahay mo dito, kasi we have a house in Oakland Hills, I have a house in Beverly Hills, and so I said, you you have to return." And I met the Lord. I said, "Pa, you know, remember what I was said? I said to you, sabi ko, ang gusto ko lang maging masaya, yeah." Nakilala ko na siya. Sino siya? <laughs> si Lord! Si Lord! Di ba kailangan natin si Lord? No, this is different. This is real relationship. Sabi niya gano'n. Sabi niya, ay, grabe ka talaga. Sabi niya, anak, anong plano mo? You know what? Sabi ko, just give me more. 
Sabi ko, but then we returned, and then I went back again, and then my dad says, what am I going to do? What are you doing? What are you trying to do? Iyak na iyak ang mama ko. How about my children? And my grand, mga epo, mga epo, what are you doing? You're crazy. I said, no, we're going back home. Because the Lord spoke to us clearly. The Lord said to me, if you found your joy, kung mahal mo po, iwanan mo lahat. It's hard. It's hard. I gave up a career as a director at the University of California. I gave up. At that time, 1994, I was making maybe 94 quid, $12,000 a month. And that's a lot of money at that time. 700,000 pesos a month. Uh, that was 1994. How much is that? A million a month, maybe? And um, somebody go, I have to turn it back. And what I did, I gave away my Oakland Hills house. I gave away our cars, our furniture. And you said Beverly Hills, I still have a little loan there, but they will turn it to the bank. And God, and my mom says, you're crazy. Ang kapapasting mo, naloka ka na. Sabi ko, ma? Sabi ko, no, this is God. I said, and what did you do? And yeah, again, all of us, sabi ni Lord, nothing. You will not take anything, just your clothes. All of us went home to the Philippines. And God restored back. Why am I teaching this? Because God, I told God, you're the first in my life. And you know what happened? What happened? I thought it was, everything would be joyful, everything is masaya na, ganon. What I did not see is God will test me if my heart is right. Because at that time, I still have some cash. Then my friends who were partners in my building in San Francisco started, there was recession. They said, Rachel, we cannot give anymore. Magka-party kami. And so I started funneling money into the payment in the banks in our building. And then sabi, until to the point, I said, no, I cannot use all my cash. And so we surrendered the, the, the building to the bank, and I said, I can't anymore. And then, that's when I realized I'm here so happy serving God, the uubus na yung cash. And then I cried out to God, I said, how come? I thought serving you would be better. You know, I turned around, you know, I forgot everything. I left everything in America. And then I didn't know God was testing my heart now. If my love is money for Him. Akala ko, enough na yung iniwanan ko lahat pinamigay ko. But that was not it. And the re that's the reason why I'm teaching this. Because I told God, Lord, gusto ko ikaw lang talaga. He stripped away everything. And the Lord says, let, let me test you in something. I will take away all your money and you will never ask a single thing from your parents. Not say any centavo from your in-laws or anyone. At yun ang nangyari. Kaya malakas ang loob ko magturo nito because I've learned how to have plenty and I've learned how to have nothing. When I say nothing, nothing means zero. Zero at night, gabi pa lang, I'm already thinking, where will I get my food for the following day for my children? Ganong kahira. And then the first ministry God gave me are the street children ministry in the Philippines and doon kami sa slum, ministering to the poor. Sabi Lord, I want you to know how to be poor. I said, oh God. Grabe po, subsob. Yung bag talagang good-good na. And I, the only thing, you know, I'm crying, God. Parang gusto mong bawiin yung mga sinabi ko ko, Lord. I said, God, okay, you know, you know my needs before I ask your word says. And then my mom will call. Of course, I, will, can, I can never ask money, right? My mom will say, what will you, what do you need? I said, no, that is okay. Wala, okay lang. But you know what? The following month, mayroong balik bayan boxes, may spam, may peanut butter, kompleto ang ganun. Iyak ako na iyak, gusto ang ganun. And then my children will pray, Mom, we went home with nothing. Nothing talaga. Yung mga anak ko, they started to pray, Lord, give us a TV. Kahit TV, wala kami. Give us a television, God. So one day, there was a balik bayan box. TV, may beta max pa. Wala siya ang ganun. I want this, I want that. My, my, all of us, God taught us how to pray. We started asking God, and I said, Dear Lord, and everything just came until after all those tests of my life, you know? When I say nothing, yung pagbukas mo na refrigerator, tubig, sasakra mo na lang kasi puro tubig eh. Walang laman, grabe Lord. And then there will people want, they will just knock on our door. And sasabihin, alam mo Rachel, kasi I'm not a pastor at that time, 
uh, the Lord impressed my heart to give you this money. Give you lang ako cash. And then there will be times someone will bring you, know, like ilang kilo ng babo, isang bagdi ng isda. Oh my God, Lord, I'm just like Elijah. You know, they're bringing food every day, every day. Because I started to pass back. And then, Lord, I don't know. I don't know where to get my transportation. But then somebody, oh, you're going to church. Come on, I'll give you a ride. Oh, you bring them on. Lord, you know, those kind of stuff. And I started every day. It's just like, I want a miracle. I'm going to do that. Every day. And there will be times like, I cannot go out, right? Because I don't have a bed. I don't have a sign. So I just started to clean the house. One day I was cleaning the house, my, you know, my, my stuff, my clothes and everything. Pag bukas ko nung bag ko, wow! You know, I got surprised. I didn't even know. That's why pag mahal ko, pero hindi mo sa lagay ka lang na lagay ng pera. I have $4,000 inside my bag. Kaya sabi ko sa katulong, magbalis, magbalis pa tayo. Kasi baka marami ka dyan. Kaya bago namin lagban ng mga damit, suksok, hindi lang ko, baka nilang six safe na dollars dyan. But it was a test of faith. And then I started to say, Lord, you are amazing, really. Every day was just a miracle for me. That was the time. That was the first portion. Because you know what? My problem at that time is, and I see here, this is my husband, si Bishop. He, he was not a bishop then. He was not even a pastor. And he has money. Sabi ko, but nagtatabi ka sa ka ng pera. Hindi, ay nag-abot lang sa akin. Ganoon. Sabi ko, but ganoon ako walang pera. Sabi ko, sabi niya, then he gives his 10%, his time. I said, kulang pa. Bakit ka pa nagbibigay? Kulang pa nga tayo, di ba? Hindi, but we follow the word. It says 10% belongs to the Lord. Ay, basta hindi, pinagpawisa ko to, hirap ako, ayoko ibigay ang 10%. This was me before. I was reveling, I was mad of him giving that 10% back to God. And then I suddenly see him, nag-i-increase ang income niya. Ang dami nag-aabot sa kanya. Sa akin mo na nag-aabot. Kano, Lord, this is not fair. I'm the one and I don't have a budget. Why? Because there's no money. Walang pa budget. I said, oh God, but ganyan ko talaga. Then sabi niya siya, mag-ika po ka. You give your tithe back, and the Lord will bless you. Amen. Then I started to hear, and then you know, in the, during uh, service in the sun, in Sunday in the church, they would say, "Give your tithe," but no one explained it to me. Ay naswerte kayo na explain ko ngayon eh. No one explained it to me. All I understand is ten percent. And my question is why? No one explained to me. It is His. It is the Lord's. No one explained it to me. Until I did my own research and I understood and I said, Okay, God, hindi pala ko may ari nito. I'm just a steward. Everything belongs to you. And then the Lord convicted me. And the Lord says, you know, the problem is not the typing. It's not the principle. The problem is your heart. I was greedy. I was selfish. Remember my story? I want to work, 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 make, make more money. And so my heart was full of greed and selfishness. I thought I was okay. And then, so I started to get, I'll obey the principle, I'll just give and give until everything the enemy, you know, stole from me or the Lord withhold from me. Alam niyo ang ginawa ni Lord? Unti-unti niya, binalik niya. Until now, you know, grabe ang pagpapala sa amin. We, we, I cannot, you know, the spiritual life namin, the physical, everything. Now, of course, my whole family were here on vacation as well. And, and, and the Lord just continually bless us and um, I have so many amazing stories. Mami, ako, kwento ko na lang sa inyo na. Mga miracles of I could not believe how the Lord has blessed me and just returned everything back to me in greater proportions that I've never expected because it belongs to, because of the tithing. Okay, now I said, I realize I'm not an owner, but a steward. Genesis 2, verses 15 to 17. Let's look at that. Okay, sabay sabay, let's read this. Then the Lord God. Yes, go ahead. See, God gave Adam and Eve the freedom to eat from any tree. Tama? But, except for one tree. So if there are ten trees, one you should not touch, right? And it's, you know, this is what God is trying, that's why I say tithing is life. It is life for Adam and Eve. 
when they disobeyed, what happened? They were kicked out of paradise. And why? Because they disobeyed. And what did they do? What they did is that they ate from the tree that is forbidden. So they acted as if they owned the tree. They did not obey. The same thing. God is telling to us, do not touch the holy tithe. That's mine. So that's what Adam and Eve did, and they acted as if they are owners rather than stewards. Pag sinabi ng steward, happy wala lang tayo. Lahat ang meron tayo ngayon are all His. So we're just stewards of all these blessings. That's why I'm saying, this is just grace. Okay? So the same thing. Hindi natin pwede ipagyabang na all we have right now is because, you know, I am a doctor, or I make money out of this, or I have this business. No. Everything is just grace from God. That's why God wants us to enjoy. Look at 1 Timothy 6.17. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. He gives us all things to enjoy. What a good God we have, diba? Pero hinihingi lang niya 10% of whatever we make. And so, having said that, He gives us everything except that what belongs to Him, and that is the tithe. So we are not owners, but stewards. Okay? You agree? You know what? I said earlier, the tithing, is a heart issue. Yep. Do you know that tithing is a test of your heart? Right. It is a test of your heart. Sabi nga ng Panginoon sa Malachi 3, verse 10, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and test me now in this. So, bukan daw natin siya. So, it's a test. Do we need to test God? No, God is faithful. Pastor said that. What God is doing, He's testing you and me if we will obey. Because tithing is really a test. You know, in the Bible, you know, I'm very prophetic. I always say this. You know, numbers, when you have dreams and visions, numbers have meanings. Number seven means what? Completion. Or Sabbath day is after the seventh, the seventh day, it's rest. So seven means rest. Completion. Number eight means, favorito nga my Chinese, is what? New beginning. It's new beginning. Nine means fruitfulness. Number 10 in the Bible means test. Really, Pastor? Oh, look at this. Malachi 3? 10. It's a test. How many 10 commandments? 10. Na nga, 10 commandments na nga. 10 commandments. Diba? May nakabuo, may nakabuo ba nun? Ng 10 commandments? Wala. Because it's really a test. How many virgins were prepared, you know, were tested for their prepare, preparedness? 10. There were ten virgins, five foolish, five what? Wise. Oh, how about how many plagues were sent to Egypt? Ten. ten. How many plagues were sent when the Israelites were in the wilderness? Ten. Amen. How many percentage yung ibibigay kay Lord? Ten. May nakaubuo ba niya? Wala. Because ten is a trial. Ten means test. Nakita niya yun? So kaya, kailangan, pag nakakita kayo in your dream, that's why na yung mga iba, 10 years of marriage, ah, dyan nagkakaproblema. In the 10th year, you know? Because it's a test. There's a lot. Ako, may binutukan ko sa akin. A test of your heart, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright, it's a test. 10 is a test and it's very biblical. And tithing is 10 part of whatever you have, whatever you receive from the Lord. It is really a test. And God says, test me now in this, says the Lord. And if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, isipin niya, bubuksan daw ni Lord ang windows of heaven and pour out for you so much blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. It's not for his sake, it's for you. Palalayasin daw niya ang mananakmal, the devourer. What devours your money? Sickness? Yeah, sickness is a devourer. You're not supposed to be sick. Amen, no? Ano din ba managohospitize ka? <laughs> Hindi pwede. Kailangan lagi ka nagtatize kay Lord para walang hospital. Amen? So, the, you know, being sick is a devouring spirit. Right? And so, and then I will rebuke the devour for your sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. In other words, the Lord is saying that you will be fruitful. You will be blessed. Kailangan, alam mo what drives away the devourer? Your tithe. 
Because the Lord's promise, and if I will not open for you the windows of heaven, the floodgates of heaven will open and money will just come from heaven. James 1.17 says, Every good and perfect gift comes from heaven above. Diyan yung gagaling sa Panginoon, galing sa taas, bababa dito sa lupa. Right? And that's what breaks it. You know, it open heavens when you give or return the tithes first to the Lord. That's what it is. Yeah. And pour out for you so much blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Grabe! How big is this room? Malito kay Lord, gaya niya puno ito. Kaya, kaya ni Lord puno ito. Isang ba? Alam ko nga na, sabi ko, Lord, grabe naman ito. How big is your room? Sabi ko, ganon. That there is, sabi na kalagay ito, will not be, ano, ano ba? That there will not be room enough to receive it. One day, sabi ko, Lord, I need a car. Actually, I need three cars. I got one for my daughter who's going to college. She needs, you know, a car. Bishop needs a car, all right? And then we need a van. Kasi ang dami anak. All right. Tatlo. One for me, one for Bishop, one for Tina. All right. So I prayed. And then I prayed. And then I heard, Done. Well done. I put my faith. Yes, God. I will receive. All right? I received three. Sabi ko, siguro sa birthday ko, May. Tapos si Tina sa August. Hindi siya siguro by birthday na September. Okay, Lord, I received that. Do you know that the Lord gave that to me in one day? Wow. Ganyan si Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All brand new in one day. Grabe nga si Lord. Hindi ako kaya gusto niya paano, but they were all paid. Amen. And one day, grabe po ang Panginoon. Kaya sabi ko, Lord, surprise me more. Kaya na sinabi ni Lord, oh, kasya ba sa garahe mo? Eh, two-car garage nga lang pala yung bahay ko. Sabi ko, oh nga, Lord, sabi ko, gano'n, two-car garage nga lang pala yun. So, it's not enough room. Grabe, di ba? So, God is good. Not only that, He added a driver. In America, I never had a driver. I had a nanny, but I never had a driver. But I go, Lord, thank you. Sobrang bait ni Lord. Amen. Palakpangan natin sa Lord. And God is saying, prove it now in this. So do we need to prove, you know, do we need to test God? Of course, no. We don't need to test God. Your obedience is what God is looking for. Your obedience. Amen? It is for your sake. Okay, nakita niyan? Grabe, many Christians will say, you know, tithing is under the law. And yung sinasabi kanina ni Pastor, it is in the Old Testament, and we're under the New Testament. You know, the New Testament of grace. No, let me tell you this. There are principles that started in the Old Testament that still is alive today. Okay, uh, it's not in my PowerPoint. Let's go to uh, Genesis 8, verse 22. Can you show that to me, Danica? Genesis 8, verse 22. Is the earth still alive? Buhay na buhay pa, right? Yeah. So there is a principle here, what you call is the principle of sowing and reaping. Alright? In Genesis um, 1, verse 11, you don't have to go there, but what it says is it's according to its kind. In other words, God created things according to its kind. Kung ginawa niya ang puno ng mangga, mangga natutubo, right? Whatever the tree is, that's what the fruit is. If it's a mango tree, it will be a mango, a fruit, yeah. So the same thing, what I'm trying to say here, if seed time and harvest time is a principle that still is alive, now, whatever you plant, that's what you will get, according to its kind. In other words, if you give love to someone, you will harvest love. If you give someone anger, okay, ano makukuha mo? Galit din, right? But if you plant the same thing with money, if you plant money, you sow money, you will reap money. Do you understand? So this principle of God is an unchanging. It cannot stop. So God honors that. 
So now, what I'm trying to say here, what principle started in the beginning from Genesis is still alive today. There are unchanging principles. That's why Jesus said, I mean, the word of God says, I do not change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the same thing with the word of God. It will never end. Amen? So now, Matthew 5, 17, 20. Let's read this. Matthew 5, 17 to 20. Okay, can you read it? Alita, no? Pero sige, let's all read it. Okay, do not think, this is Jesus speaking. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. I say to you, fulfilled. Whoever reads one of the these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 20. The righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Now I want to zero in into verse 20. It says here, it's, it clearly states here, for I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. When you read the scribes and the Pharisees, we're talking about the law. That's the Mosaic law, Moses law. You will by no means enter the kingdom of God. But what is happening here is the Lord is saying that we have to exceed the righteousness. So under the New Testament of grace, the law, I mean, the, the, the grace is, has a higher standard compared to the law. All right? So your New Testament, mas mataas na yon ang standard than the law. Are you getting this? So he then, this is the Lord Jesus Christ setting a good example. Now, let's look at Matthew 5, 21 to 22. Do I have a slide for that? All right. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. And whoever murders will be in danger of the judgment. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. Kumbaga, sa Old Testament, sa Deuteronomy 5.17, sinabi doon, do not murder. Now that we're under the Testament of grace, and sinabi ito, magalit ka pa lang sa kapatid mo, you have murdered already. All right? Because the law, kaya akala nila, although we're under the New Testament, is grace, grace, grace. Kaya nga may mga teaching na extreme grace na kukunto na tuloy yung iba. May grace si Lord. No, do not abuse grace. The grace is given so that you will not sin. All right? Matthew 5, 27, 28. Look at this. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that whoever looks at a woman to lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. Tumingin ka parang sa babae na malaswa, nangalunya ka na. Tingin pa lang yun. So the New Testament has a higher standard. It was in Deuteronomy 5, 18 says, you shall not commit adultery. Di ba? Nasa Ten Commandments yan. But now, that we're under the New Testament, you look at the person lustfully, babae o lalaki, you have committed adultery. So, the New Testament has a higher standard. So, you know why I'm saying this? Kasi in the Old Testament ang tayo, pinagyayabag natin, di wala na, nasa New Testament na tayo, no, it's a higher standard. So, kung 10% noon, no, dapat na yun 20%. Kasi ako, balik na lang tayo sa pen. <laughs> Ayun yung ten, di ba natin maibigay? Tataas ang kanil, Lord? Parang mali yata, no? Di ba, Lord? Ito mo na, okay? So in other words, the righteousness that grace demands, Jesus is grace, okay, goes further than the law. Matindi. Now let's look another one. Hebrews 7, verses 1 to 9. Look at this. Hebrews 7, verses 1 to 9. Okay? Sabihin na natin hanggang 8 na lang. Okay, kasi ang pinaka-impact nito is verse 8. Okay, 1, 2, 3. Let's, let's read this. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, 
who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him, to whom also Abraham gave what? A tenth part of all. First, to be meaning king of peace. Without father, without mother, without theology. Having neither beginning nor place, nor end of life, nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Now I consider how great this man was, to whom heaven the power of Abraham gave a land of the spoils. And indeed those who are the sons of God, who receive the priesthood, Jesus or Melchizedek, whose genealogy is not derived from them, received tithes from Abraham and blessed him who had the promise. Now, beyond all contradictions, the lesser is blessed by the better. Here, mortal men receive tithes, but there he receives them of whom it is witness that he is. Let me, you know, this version is New King James. Let me tell you something about this, okay? Melchizedek is the king of Salem. And Abraham met Melchizedek. A lot of people were asking, and many Bible scholars says, Oh, yan si Melchizedek nyan, that's Jesus. Or maybe a, a symbolism of Jesus. But you know, when you read this, it says in verse um, 2, To whom also Abraham gave what? Death. The tithe si Abraham. First being translated king of righteousness. And then also king of Salem, meaning king of peace. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but made like the Son of God, remains a priest continually. Sounds like Jesus, right? Para siya yung high priest. Wala siyang nanay tatay. Actually, it's the spirit, the God of Father. You know, a mother na. Of course, we know in the literal, it's the Virgin Mary. But he's the king of peace. He's the king of righteousness. And so this Melchizedek is a symbolism of Jesus Christ. So in, during those times, nagbibigay na, nagstart tayo kanina with Genesis, where Ian, Abel gave tithes already. And now, here we are, talking about Abraham giving 10% of the spoil. So you understand this. Now, ang maganda dito sa verse 8. Look at verse 8. It says here, here, where is that here? Mortal men receive tithes. Here on the earth, yung mga tao, yung iglesia, the church receives the offerings, right? But there, where is that there? That's in heaven, well, there, well, you know, where Jesus is. He receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. Is Jesus still alive? Yeah. Yes. In heaven, the Lord receives our tithes and our offerings. Ang nakikita lang natin kasi here on earth. But you know, when you separate the holy tithe, when you separate your offering, ang totoo niya, ang unang tumatanggap si Lord. Amen. Jesus, that's why it is holy. It is an honor. It is one good privilege to separate, to be stewards of His money, and then you know how to handle the money accurately and appropriately. So you separate it because here on earth, yes, it says here, here on earth, mortal men receive tithes, but there in heaven, Jesus receives them of whom it is witness that he lives. So what a privilege. Kaya pala napaka-holy nito. Kaya pag gumagawa kayo ng check nyo, akala nyo, binibigay nyo sa Passion Church, actually, before you do that, yung, um, si Lord, alam na yung gagawin mo eh. While you're writing your check or your offering, the Lord Jesus is receiving it already up in heaven, and then here on earth, we mo sa offering basket. But the, but the beautiful thing, right? Sige, parapakan natin si Lord. Ay, akala nila sa sabasa lang yung In heaven, Jesus is receiving your holy tithe and your offering. And that's the good news about it. Kala mo, nilagay mo palang doon. Ginaganong ganun lang. Pero tinanggap na nila dyan in the spirit. Because remember, before it manifests in the physical, it starts up there. Diyan muna sa taas. Even your blessings comes from there. That's why never stop the cycle. 
So kung dito nang galing yan, what you do is you plant it here, you give your tithe here, you give your offering here, it goes back to him as a worship, he receives it, and then he returns it back again. So the cycle never stops. But some people, sadly, they eat their tithe. Kinakain nila, binhi nila. Wala na. Alright, I know we're learning. Tahimik na naman. Okay, Matthew 23, 23. Okay? Okay, can you guys read this? Woe to you! This is Jesus, okay? For you face and have neglected justice and mercy and faith. This without leaving the others and done. You know, in here, Jesus was scolding the Pharisees because they were tithing meticulously from their herb garden, and but they neglect justice, mercy, and all this good stuff. But Jesus, in here, this is the only by, uh, verse in the New Testament that Jesus was affirming the tithe. Mas maganda ang NLT. I think I have an NLT version. And here, look at this. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law? And you Pharisees, hypocrites, nagagalit si Jesus, yung mga hypocrito kayo, sabi ganun sa mga scribes, for you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herd garden, but you ignore the more important aspects of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe. Listen, this is God's Jesus. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. Aliwana. Jesus is affirming that tithing should be a practice that all Christians should do, even now that we're in the New Testament. Kaya yung iba, you, you, you suffer lack. I've experienced it because when I started to tithe, that's when my breakthrough started to come. Amen? Amen? So, you know, kaya nga sabi nga ni Lord, test me now in this. He wants us to test it because He knows you will be blessed. Tama? You know, I want to make it a point that, you know, receiving from the Lord is the benefit, okay? You will receive, and that's the benefit of your faithfulness in returning the tithe. But I want to make it clear, this is not your motive. Your motivation is love for God. Amen? Mahal mo siya, kaya gusto mong sundin ang kanyang inuutos. Mahal pa natin si Lord? Amen. And you're giving... And your tithing is coming from a grateful heart. Amen. Hindi ah siya yung palasikreto ng bibig ako pastora. Kasi gusto ko pagpalain ako ni Lord. Ay nako. Hindi mo na makukuha kasi malaki na mo tib mo eh. Your motives wrong. Your motivation should be love for God, and the purpose why you want to return is to glorify His name. That's your purpose. You want to give glory to God. Do I hear an amen? amen? Okay, there is a story. 2 Chronicles 31, verses 4 to 10. Sabay-sabay ito. Malapit na matapos tong part 2 ko. Kaya matutuwa kayo. Malapit na ito. Alright, part 2. Okay, sabay-sabay po tayo. Moreover, themselves to the law of the Lord. Ang trabaho ng mga pastor, okay, I'll just put it here. The work of the pastor is to devote themselves to the law, to the studying of the word of God. The same thing during those times, 
The work of the Levites and the priests were to study the word of God. All right? Because that's what we give to you. Tama po ba? But then what happened? He saw that there's no food. And then the, the, the priests were all working outside. And they were not studying the word of the Lord. And Hezekiah was upset. This is not what it should be. The priest should be inside studying the law of the Lord. And so what he did, he made a reform. He says, everyone, verse 5, as soon as the commandment was circulated, he made a reform. Everyone who returned their tithe. Okay? And Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of grain, wine and oil and honey. Okay? Agriculture sila. And all of the produce of the field. And they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. Lahat. Hayo o pagkain, grain, wine, oil, 10%, everyone. Sabi ng hari, pag nagsalita ang hari, sinusunod ng lahat. So they brought in everything, the tithe of the holy things, the tithe, the tithe from, the, from the agriculture. And verse 7 says, in the third month, they began laying them in heaps. Third means to conform. So they obeyed, and they laid them in heaps, and they finished in the seventh month. Completion. Nagpahinga na. On the seventh month, nagstop. Then verse 8 says, Dumalo si Hezekiah, and the leaders came, and they saw these hips and hips. They blessed the Lord and his people. Then Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites concerning the hips. And Azariah, the chief priest, says, Okay, since the people began to bring the offerings into the house of the Lord, we have had enough to eat and have plenty left. For the Lord has blessed His people. And what is left is this great abundance. Nakita nyo, simula raw since, simula daw nang dinala ng mga anak ng Diyos ang kanilang mga offerings, we started to have this abundance. And we ate them. But still, we have so much left. Imagine because there is so much great abundance. So the gist of this picture is when God's people began to die, God began to bless them even more. For example, kaya kailang maintindihan doon. So the more they were blessed, the larger your tithes grew. For example, in the first month, you gave 1,000 out of, of your 10,000, your first fruit. And then suddenly, as you are giving, you are faithful, the Lord is pleased, and then gave you a promotion from work. You 10,000, want to give 20,000. So how much is your tithes now? 2,000. So the Lord will elevate you when you're faithful. And so what that is, the story, what happens is they got blessed and more blessed and more blessed. And that was, hap that was what happened in my life. And I know for some of you, you have experienced this also. See, kailangan natin intindihin ang word of God. The word of God says, the priest should study the word of God. The role of the pastors, okay, I'm a pastor, and I'm so grateful because I get an allowance from my church. Bishop gets an allowance. The Levites, the workers in our church, they get an allowance. So praise the Lord. Why do we get an allowance? We started not on the fourth year of my service to God. On the fourth year, or si Bishop, fifth year. Ako on the fourth year, doon lang ako tumanggap ng allowance. Because why? Because the church was still struggling at the time. But then it was wrong. Until somebody told me, why are you not accepting allowance from the church? I said, because the church just started. It doesn't have much money, you know. Oh no, that is wrong. You know what? To someone told me, a pastora, you don't trust God to provide your needs. And I said, ano nung ba yun? Because I was also new in serving God. Ano ba yun? So I started to receive allowance. I said to Bishop, well, you know what? I think I don't have faith that God can provide for me. And Bishop says, no, our church is so young. We cannot get our allowance. So I go, ikaw kaya mag-budget? Ako, kukuha ko. So I did. <laughs> when I started to get my allowance, the church got so blessed. Because God provided. Because I got my allowance, I give my tithe, and then the church got blessed, and the churches, the members of the, you know, the church also got provided by God, and they returned their tithes, and we got elevated. So on the fifth year, Bishop started to get his allowance, because there's so much already. It started to have this effect, a cycle. You know, the work of the church is to provide for the needs of the church. The church, the members of the church, okay? Kasi tayo, we, we, the, the word of God says that there may be food in my house. Remember, we read that in Malachi? That food means also salary for the workers. 
and, and helping in the benevolence. That's why for us, when there's someone who's sick in the hospital, when someone dies or a member of the church needs money or calamity, we just sow and sow. In the Yolanda, our church sent 4 million pesos in those, you know, in the provinces. Every time there's something that happens in the Marawi, we send millions of money, you know, because that's our role as a church. Why do we have that money? Because we know the principle and we obey. That's why I'm teaching this. Because the church, the pastor's work is to study the word. Sadly, we have a type of pastor, and I know, I'm sorry to say this, Pastor Benny, I know you're working outside. But there are many pastors still working outside. And that's not what God wants. You know what? We rob God if we don't return our tithes, right? But we double rob God when our pastors work outside. This is a story. Because we, as members of the church, are responsible to have food in the house of God. In the Philippines, I grab it. I see pastors. You know, I understand this. Some pastors need to work because they need to be good examples, right? If I will rely, and the first thing I always miss, you know, the, the Lord. Some pastors will ask me, Pastor Ora, can you teach a tithing? Why? Because they love this small. They can, they don't know how. They don't want to be manipulative. Some members of the church, pag nagturo si pastor ng tithing, iniisip nila, minamanipulate sila. Kaya sabi ko, invitahin niyo ako. Because I'm bold enough to say the truth. Because this is for you. I got blessed with all my testimonies because I started to tithe and started to give offerings. But it's so sad. In, in the Philippines, there are many small churches, right? And because it's too small, I said, no, that is not right. Because you're too small, you're not going to give tithe and the pastor is not being yeah. blessed. That's wrong. The word of the Lord says that they have to study the word. Ang iba pa, grabe naman yung pastor namin. Trabaho na trabaho, hindi tuloy nakakapagturo ng maayos. E kung nagbibigay pa tayo sa church, hindi na siya magtatrabaho sa labas. And the same church, they complain. They complain. But imagine the pastors. They work outside because they want to be good examples. They want to put their children to school. Pag naging maganda yung damit ni ate ng asawa ng pastor, ay it's ko yan. Mayabang pa kapag nakakapagibigay sila. I've seen small churches. And I said, oh my goodness, you know. I, I, I've seen and I've rebuked some of them because I know that their pastor should not work outside. Their focus is to study the Word of God, that Amen. they may have a good word for you every Sunday. Amen. But we rob God when our pastors work outside. Double robbing God. Do you understand this? Amen. You know, that's why I, I'm saying this, because not because Pastor Ben and I talked about this. No, it's not that. Because my goal is to educate the church. And we expect too much from our pastors too. Yung pastor na yun, siya na yung janitor, siya pa yung usher, siya pa yung lahat every Sunday. Right? That's why, you know, in our church, we're blessed. We're blessed in our church. And every time we have speakers, they will ask Bishop, Bishop, kaya na ko maulit. Minimum namin, 25,000. 20,000 ang aming offering. Sa isang pastor, when we preach. That's the way we give. Because we know it's not our money. In our church, our members are just givers. Amen. Be, grabe nga, if I will compare our giving to other churches, nasasyak sila. They will ask me, Pastora, paano yung nagagawa yan? This morning, this morning lang, may nag-text sa akin, Pastora, our offering just this morning is 502,000 pesos. That's half a million in one offering. Uh -huh. Nakakaluna po sa amin. Kasi they don't Sometimes, if you're, you know, in our church, money is just flowing. <laughs> Bakit? I don't know, for some reason, they are just givers. Because they learn how to bless. They learn how to bless. Because we started to educate them that that money is not yours. And the more you plant, the more you harvest. Amen. It's not manipulation. It's not manipulation. Not at all. And our church can hear. We hear. We ask God, how much, God? You would not believe this. One day, I was praying. And I said, Okay, God, we want a new car. We Bishop loves car. I said, we want a new car. And at that time, isa pa lang ang car namin. It's about three years old. And then the Lord said to me, we have an associate pastor. This is many years ago. 
And I was praying, I said, and the Lord said to me, tell your husband, ibigay niya yung kochi niya. Sabi ko, oh Lord, ang isa pa kochi ko. Bibigay pa namin, parang nagalitan ako ng asawa ko. Sabi niya, bigay mo kay Bing, kay Pastor Bing. Because Pastor Bing is our associate and he's an evangelist. And he travels and he commutes and he, you know, there's no car. All right. So, I was praying and said, Lord, touch the heart of my husband that he will obey. All right. I was at the door. Because I can hear Sabi ko, sabi ni Lord, ibigay mo yung kochi mo kay Pastor Bing. Tinitingan ako ni Bishop, bumalik ka, mag-pray ka ulit. So, sabi, <laughs> sabi ko, nung nung the Lord said, give your card to Pastor Bing. Ano ba yan? Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, eh, paano tayo? Eh, sabi ni Lord eh. And said, so he went to the room, and he prayed. Paglabas niya, umiyak-iyak siya. Ama ka, ibigay ko na. <laughs> sabi ko, sige. Okay? And then sabi ko, alright, after a few months, naglalakad kami, kasi we live in one village. And then I saw the cars just parked there. Another day, natin pa rin ang car. Tapos tinatukot kami sa bahay ni Pastor King. Pastor, how come the car is there? Ba't nakapark lang? Every day we pass by, lagi nakapark. Eh kasi, Pastora, wala akong pambili ng clutch. <laughs> because he's not rich, you know? Ah, wala akong pambili ng clutch. Oh, okay, sige. Alright. Pray na naman ako, Lord, bigyan mo siya ng pambili. Clutch, bigyan mo sa akin, Lord. Yung coach yung binili mo, bilhin mo ko sa kanya pabalik. Ay ko, Lord, what did you say? Sabi ko, yung coach yung binigay niyo, babayaran mo, bibilhin ko pabalik. Yeah. Ay ko, patay na ako dito. O di, sige, nag-indain naman ako kay Bishop sa pinto. Nakita ko, yung mukha niya, malayo pa lang. Sabi niya, ano sabi ni Lord? Yung coach yung binamigay mo? Oh, bilhin mo raw. Ay, hindi na si Lord dyan, ha? Hindi na si Lord dyan! Sabi ko, no, mag-pray ka ulit. He prayed! Binigyan pa siya ng amount. I can remember, it was 200, 300,000. Ano niya, paglabas ng grabe naman si Lord. Binigay ko na, babayaran ko pa. Tapos muna kami kay Pastor Bing. Pastor Bing, etong cash, ganyan kakapal. Pastor, bakit po? Yung kotse daw, kunin ko pa bakit etong cash na. Naku, tuwan-tuwa si Pastor. Grabe, Pastor. Saan nakakita ng ganun? But you know what happened after that? We have three brand new cars, the one I was telling you. Wow. Yeah, they be like the Lord is so good. When you obey what He asks you to do, you will not have enough room to fill your house. So bra, so bra. Kaya na sabi ko, Lord, yung mga pastor, talagang pina, pinamahal namin kasi pag sinabi na natin kayo mo, ibigay mo yan. Ganun ang ginagawa namin. Oh, di ba? Kaya yung mga kotse ng mga kapatiram, may hands nyo na. <laughs> Akin ka, Lord, ha? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But that's all it is. A Lord, ha? <laughs> no, but that is true. You know what? You know, because we need to honor our pastors. Amen? Amen. I preach in a church. Kung mga mga naging pastor, kubilin nyo naman ang barong yung pastor nyo. Pastora, hindi pa naman patay, eh. Hindi mo puro na. <laughs> You got to bless the man of God because they're praying for you. They they always pray for you. They cry to the Lord for you. And there's a story. This is really funny, but this is true. You know, alam niyo yung ano yung malabon, the fish port where there's a lot of fish and malabon. So there was this ano pastor preaching. Galing ni pastor. Tapos mga business man yan ang jan sarap mga ano yung maligo shante titinda na isla. So they, he was there, and he was preaching. Pag siya ni Pastor, yung kanyang sapatos, bumanga. So nakagkita nung ganun. Wow, nakita nung isang businessman. Oh my gosh, sapatos ni Pastor, nakabukas. Ang ganun, kumuha ng kanyang kakapal na pera. In the yung rubber band. Pastor, eto lang mo ba ang kali mo? Hindi pinigay yung pera ng rubber band. Kita nang ganun. Right? But you know what? We have to bless the man. They walk, they pray, they teach, right? But allow them not to work outside. Let them study the word of God. Because you know, the Lord relies upon His children to bless the church. Amen? Right? Because these pastors are the ones doing the counseling, doing the hospital visitation. Di ba grabe? 
Kaya nga, for us, ang goal nga namin, sabi namin ni Bishop, uh, we're expecting big uh, blessing coming this year. Sabi nga namin, we, we want to bless our pastors, and if we can give them cars, we'll do that. But we have blessed them with, ano, kasi yung goal namin, to give them businesses, and so kingdom businesses to bless them. Because they are really servants of God. Amen? Now, before I end, I want to have three men to do an illustration before I get to multiplication. Nakapos na tayo. Madali lang yung multiplication. 15 minutes lang yan. I need three men. Walang malakas? O three handsome men. Malakas. May handsome men. Three. Money. Come here, money. Come here. Tatlo lang. Come on, come on. Illustration lang to. Sige na. Kailangan pakita ko sa inyo. Okay, here's an example. I want you to picture this, okay? Because this will be a combination of tithes, which is 10%, and from the 90%, we get our offering. Maliwanag po ba yun? Offering doesn't have any percentage, all right? All right, so I said, Oliver, Manny, and Josh, I'm going to America. I'll be gone for a while, but this is what I'm going to do. I will be sending wiring money to you guys. I'm giving you 10,000 pounds. Pounds kasi, laki naman. 10,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds monthly. But all I ask is that you give 1,000, it's like 10%, of this 10,000 to my house. Because my house needs food. Bishop, malakas kumain yun. So you send 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. The 9,000, bahala na kayo. You can eat it, you can give it away, it's up to you. It's all yours, all right? So I left. Malis na ako. 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. So we have an agreement. They all agree. After three months, I called my husband. I said, hi, Bishop. I go, okay, how are you? And everything. You know, by the way, before I left, I spoke to Oliver, to Manny, and to Josh. I told them 10,000 each, I will wire money, and 1,000 will be given to our house. So what happened? What happened to Oliver? Ah, si Oliver, okay yan? Nagbibigay ng 1,000 every month. Wow. Okay, good. How about money? Mukha mabait eh, no? Ah, uh, nagbibigay yan ng 2,000 every month. Wow, why 2,000? I only asked for, ano eh, 1,000. I don't know, he gives 2,000 every month. Eh si Josh, kontrabida kasi eh, oh. Ano ba ang ginawa niya? Binigay niya sa akin 500 lang. 500 pounds? Ang usapan, 1,000 pounds. How could he do that? I don't know. But that's what he gave. Okay, second man. Oh, Oliver, the same amount. 1,000 pounds. How about money? 2,500 pounds. Grabe, parang di kailangan ng pera, no? Okay. How about si Josh? Si Josh, 250 na lang. Hindi yan ang usapan. That's not what we agreed. I don't know what's wrong. Okay, on the third month, Oliver stayed for 1,000. Okay, that's what we agreed. How about money? Nag 3,000 pounds na. Ay, grabe. Eh si, ano, si Josh, ano na nangyari? Hindi ko na nakita. Wala na, no more! Oh my gosh! Okay, so Pastora was upset. All right, so what do you think will I do? What will I do? Remember, I'm rich. I want to give away my money. All right, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. Ano sa tingin yung gagawin ko? What will I do with Oliver? Was he faithful? Yes. Yes. Hindi niya binali yung 10% na hinihingi ko. Then I will continue my support. Right? Eh, yun, nakita ko pa ba? No. What happened to Josh? He disappeared. Do you think I will continue my support? No. No. So what will I do because I have extra money? I will give it to Manny, who's so faithful. I only asked for 1,000, but what he had proven to me is that he loves my house. So, his 10,000 will now be 20 pounds. 20,000 pounds. <laughs> Don't double. So, nakita mo, nagbibigay siya na ikapu. He gave his tithe, the 10%, and 
and because he's faithful in giving, offering extra, and I saw that, that he cares for my house, then, and he's a good steward, then I'll add more. Josh did not, you know what Josh did, he stole from me. He robbed me. We have an agreement, right? But he took them all away. So do you think I will bless him? No, he's not a good steward. Simple illustration. So na naawang ko ba natin si Lord? No more. God bless you, Josh. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, guys. Naintindihan niyo po? Simple, right? Ano ba yun? Kasi what happened is we, we steal the money. We eat the money. And so, ano na nangyayari? When we disobey the word of God, I don't think God is happy. But when we plant more, we harvest more. And this is my last. Mabilis lang po to. Alright? Part three. God is the master of multiplication. Mabilis to. Alright? Ang pinag-usapan natin is the 90%. Manny gave more than. He gave the 10% and the 20% more. He gave more. Whereas he could use that money, di ba? Money, money, kilo yung pangano niya. So, he could have used that money. Pero, binigay pa rin niya sa bahay ng Panginoon. So, the Lord saw that. And the Lord doubled his income. That's what you call multiplication. What we're going to use is this Luke 9, verses 12 to 17. Okay? When the day began to wear away, this is Jesus, with the 12 disciples came and said to him, sent the multitude away. They were in the wilderness. And that he may go into the surrounding towns and country and lodge and get provisions, for we are in a desert, deserted place. Verse 13. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we go and buy food for all these people. For there were about 5,000 men. Then he said to his disciples, make them sit down in groups of 50. And they did so, and made them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the multitude. So they all ate and were filled, and 12 baskets of the leftover fragments were taken up by them. <laughs> See, the stories, they were in the wilderness, and there were people following Jesus. In Israel, in Israel, they don't count children and women. So there were 5,000 men. As you know, lagi marami babae at mga bata. So maybe there were 10,000 or even more, right? But no matter what, kahit nga tatlo, o baka kay Pastor Benny, kulang kang limang tinapay at dalawang isla. Tama? But we're talking about two fish and five pandisal na binrate with Lord, and they were all filled, and at the end, verse 17 says, 12 baskets of the leftover fragments. Ganong karami. They were all, they all ate, and meron pang 12 leftovers. Alright? Now, the question here, sabi dito sa verse 14, let them sit down, sabi ng Panginoon sa mga disciples. Kasi gusto ng mga disciples, paalisin sila. But I think, Imagine, out of 10,000 na lang sabi natin na tao, walang nagdala kahit ano. Isang bata lang, ang may dala doon, sabi ng ibang verses sa, sa ibang um, episode, at ang sinabi doon, ano daw, uh, dalawang tinapay ang dala ng bata at lima, ay dalawang isa at limang tinapay. It was a young lad. Ano na yan sa mga nanay? Bakit yun lang, Right? But I did believe Jesus wants to show a miracle this time in the wilderness. Wilderness speaks of nothingness, nothing, zero. Well, like Jalibi is a desert, everything there. And Jesus says, let them sit down in groups of 50. If you have 10,000 people and just to group them in 50, I think that's a miracle already. Karami namang 50 noon, di ba? But God wants them, Jesus wants them to sit down. Now, there are two keys for multiplication, okay? One, the first key is this. Something must be blessed before it can multiply. Ikung ako ang disciple ni Lord, my first question is, I, want, I will always, this is most Christians will do. 
When we're in need, we always want to figure out how can the Lord bless me. In my situation right now, most of the time we will ask, how is going? How is God going to provide for my needs? Diba? Kung ang kailangan mo ay 100,000 and you only make 10,000 a month, paano kaya ako pagpapalain ni Lord? Sometimes we think that way, right? We always are ahead of God. We do not know, how can God bless me back? The same thing. The disciples were thinking, send them away. Hindi natin kayong pakainip to. But you know, Jesus has something else in his mind. He says, let them sit down as if have them rest, give them rest. First key, something must be blessed before it can multiply. What Jesus did, he took the five loaves, all right? And two fish. And looking up to heaven, verse 16, and it says here, he blessed them and broke them and gave them to the disciples. A lot of people miss this. What many of us have missed in the story is that the miracle did not happen in the master's hand. It happened in the hands of the disciple. Remember, when you return the 10% tithes, what left, what's left with you is the 90%. Jesus broke the bread, took his portion, binigay kay Peter, binigay kay Paul ang tinapay. And what they did is, you have the 90%, give them away. You understand? So while they're giving away the bread, hindi na uubos. They kept planting, they kept sowing, they kept giving away. Nothing. Jesus blessed it first. When you return your tithe, your 90% is taken away from the curse. When you return the tithe to the Lord, whatever you have, God will bless it. Now, right now, you pera na nasa after you return the tithe, the 90% is in your hand. That 90% is the miracle seed. So the 90% that you have should be planted. So the second key is this. What is the second key? Only what is given away can multiply. And that is the offering. You got to give God what is due Him first, the 10%. Yun lang hinihingi niya because it belongs to Him. But out of your 90%, that is the second key only what is given away can multiply. All right? So if you go back to the story, if the disciples ate, what did they say to Jesus, you'll have the bread. And what you did is you ate them. That's all done. But what they did is they copied what Jesus did. They started to give away. And then they back to the ubos. And the end of the story is the 12 basket full. Remember, there are 12 disciples. If you serve God, you will never be empty. It's so like for the 12 disciples. You know, if it's a being, you're giving your time, you're giving your talent, you're giving your treasure, three peace. Time, talent, and treasure is your mind. So that's what it is. So out of the offering, they imitated what Jesus did. You have to give it away so that it could multiply. When you return your holy time, it now, the 90% that you have, has a potential to multiply. Wala na siyang curse. Kaya wala pa kinapansin, in the offering there is no percentage. You gotta give it with a grateful heart. The more you give, okay, this is me. I always ask God, Lord, how much do you want me to give? I always ask God. Because I might think 10,000 is enough, but God wants say 50,000, then you give 50,000. Hindi naman iyo yun. Masarap magbigay na hindi iyo. Tama? Diba? Hindi akin kasi. Diba? E kung akin, kung aakinin mo yan, ay hindi, ay mo ko. Ba? Ganun lang yun eh. Right? So we have to understand this. God is teaching, tithe, remember I want to, tithe is the Lord. Right? Alam na natin yan. If you know that the tithe, the 10% belongs to the Lord, then you have not really given anything yet. Wala ka bang binibigay. Kasi we all agree that 10% is His. So wala ka bang binibigay. Saan ka kukuha? From the 90%. And that's where you start to give. Now, remember what I said, whatever you plant, that's what you will sow, or you will reap. So whatever you sow, that's where you will reap. So, 
Kung nagtanim ka ng 10%, you will reap. Nagtanim ka ng 20%, you will reap. 20% din suguro, or even more. But it would always be different because you have not, tithing is really returning, but giving offering is where you do the planting. Every farmer knows na wala kang aanihin pag hindi ka nagtanim. In 1 Corinthians, all right, 9, whatever you sow sparingly, you will reap sparingly. If you sow abundantly, you will reap abundantly. And every seed na ibinibigay ni Lord, that's a seed for you to plant. All right? Pag ako may isang binihin ng apple, an apple seed, if I plant it, what will I get? An apple tree. And I started with a seed. So it's an apple tree. And then the apple tree started to bear fruit. How many fruits do you think will I have? Plenty. Sa dami ng fruits, kukuha lang ako ng isa. Pag binukas ko yung fruit na yun, how many seeds do I have? Ala. And ang dami pa nun. But I only started with one. That's the same principle. That's why in offering, I always ask God, how much do you want to give, Lord? Remember? <coughs> Nakapag-offering nga ako ng bahay, nakapag-offering ako ng kotse. It's hard, I know in the beginning, I'm, and I, God knows your heart, He will not test you by not, you know, with those kind of things. Maybe iba ba tayo. But, what I'm trying to say is never break the cycle. If you want multiplication, you plan. From a seed to a tree, and how many fruits will you get from a tree? Of course, napakarami, and from all those fruits, you have many, many, many more seeds. You understand? Now, Proverbs 11, 24, 25, I don't have a slide, but it says here, one person gives freely, yet gains even more. Another withholds unduly, but, but comes to poverty. The more you withhold, the more you will come to poverty. Pero you, when you scatter your seed, ang daming tatamaan niya. And if it's a fertile ground, I guarantee you, may a harvest ka. And I've done this, I've seen this, I've seen it in many, many ways. Nagugulat ako talaga. Because I don't ask God, I don't question God, I just give when He tells me to give. Okay, this is my last slide. Point one, God cannot bless a thief. If you're robbing God, He cannot bless you. When we do not give or return our tithe, returning, tithing is returning. Giving offerings, that's when you start to plan. That's giving, all right? Point two, God cannot bless someone who is selfish and greedy. Someone who hoards his money. You need to plant, sow, and give away to reap a harvest. Gusto mo kumani? Kailangan mo magtanim. Kung wala kang tinatanim, huwag kang mag-expect ng harvest. Naintindihan mo? Amen. Talaga. Pwede bang Lord, ang tagal naman, nagtanim ka ba? That's the question. But if you know how to plant in times of need, hindi ka na, ikaw pa hahabuli ng pera. Ikaw ang hahabuli ng pera. Okay? Number three, God cannot bless someone who spends his money unwisely. Spending beyond your means, mishandling or misusing his money, is looking for good stewards. Akala nga nung iba, Ang Philippines, open na sa maraming credit cards. Akala nila, blessing ang credit card. Oh my goodness. It's not. Utang ng utang, yun ang nangyayari. They spend beyond their means. Cannot. If God can bless you, you know, if, if you, God can bless you if you know how to handle it right. I have credit cards, but it's all zero balance. If I use it right now, if I spend for airfares, kalahati million, next bill, it's all paid. I never will allow the, ma the bank to steal money from the Lord. Because that's the way I look at it. So kailangan zero balance tayo. The only thing, you know, is when, you know, kaila, sorry, I am this way. I'm trying to show you a good example. Okay, in our church, sabi ko sa kanila, no, credit card is not a blessing if you abuse it. Okay? 
So if you need cash, if you need to use it, make sure you pay it in full. Kasi magkakaroon ka na interest. Di ba? And that's not good. That's the way it is. So, I'm done. No, nag-survive kayo? Nang two hours in half ba kayo ng turo? Palakakan na ito. That's the answer. Okay? Remember that. You will never have a harvest until you plant. Just remember the three illustrations kanina, yung illustration natin sa dati yung lalaki. The more you give, the more you receive. That is really true. Amen? Questions? Okay, matakot. <laughs>